Greetings, fellow traveler. Today, I want to discuss allowing oneself to be better than they can ever imagine. As we go along our walks of life, we can really uh, get trapped in the idea that the world, people, situations are coming against us. And we can believe it to our core. But over time, some begin to see that what we perceive as resistance is really telling us what beliefs are within us and is projecting those beliefs out to perceived enemies or uh, perceived problems and issues. I bring this up because I'll say uh, yeah, for the most recent future, past week or two, I've been spending time thinking about how this has played out for myself. And it's not to say I have it all figured out at all. But what I began to see was when I had perceived conflicts with individuals, with others, it played out so perfectly in my reality that there was no changing my idea of what was going on in the moment. At that point in time, and even up to this day, it's something I work with. It's having, having that true understanding that what I once believed to be true at one point in my journey, it's not so much as true in this aspect of my journey. Meaning I could have such a discord with individuals or environments around me that I don't realize that it's my belief, it's my concepts that are generating these ideas. In doing so, that exercise has helped me give myself forgiveness. And I learned this bit by bit over the, over the years. And when I have those moments where I slip back into that projection and reacting to the projection, it's what I would call a reality check. It's one of those moments where I say, okay, that's something that you can work on within you because it's being projected out into the world. And I, I like the word projection because the idea of the pineal gland or the third eye, some call it, uh, I like to call it the, the first eye. The first eye works like a projector or better yet, a filter because it takes information in, but it also sends information out. We can see all the ideas and the ingredients of our world within us in our lived experience in our inner world. And the pineal gland takes all those ingredients and creates the stage that we see in our life with our two eyes. So as I sit and think about that idea, uh, yesterday I had a very interesting conversation as well, a uh, seemingly random conversation with somebody about the same idea. It can be tied to any aspect of your life. But what you see in the world, it's what lies within you. Now, some of those things we may not like, we may not want to accept, but it's the truth of the matter. If we look at the idea of planting a seed, not metaphorically, the simple process of planting a seed in the medium of soil. That's how our mind works. We take in information with our two eyes 
in the first eye sends it right on into the heap of information that we have in our internal world. And some of those seeds we nurture, we water. And as we water it more and more, if, as we hold on to those beliefs more and more, as we identify with those beliefs more and more, we're nourishing a seed that will eventually come to fruition and break the surface of the pineal gland and project it out into our world of reality. Now it ebbs and flows, it comes in waves. High tide, low tide. But it's always there. And just as we'll see the seeds break through the soil, develop, develop, come right into its peak time for harvest. Whatever you grow brings many seeds with it, seeds in multitudes. Then you get a larger tar, larger tide, a larger wave. You get more seeds to plant. Now, as I sat and I thought about that, I had to be accountable for some of the seeds that I've nourished over my life. This is not a quest for perfection. This is not me uh, assessing anyone in the world but myself, because I understand what I see in the world is of my making. This is also me reminding not only myself, but reminding you if some part of you inherently knows that whatever you see in the world is something that resonates with a seed that's been planted and nourished within you. So over the course of my life, when I've grown and evolved along my way and seen perceived uh, strifes or struggles or attacks, it's the understanding that for a majority of my journey up to would say over the past decade, I knew I was good enough. I always knew I was good enough, just as you inherently know, some part of you knows that you are good enough, you are worthy. However, I got caught up in reacting to the world outside of me instead of nurturing that part within me that knows I'm good enough. And because I chose to nourish a different aspect that was not so conducive to the reality that I wanted to see in my outside world, almost like I was fighting for my limitations. As I seen this projected out into the reality in front of me, I became angrier. I became more vengeful at times. I became somebody who felt as if I had to dominate the outside world to prove my worthiness. Yet when I began to go in more, when I began to take more time for myself and assess some of the perceived ob obstacles of the journey, there was a relief in knowing not only are you worthy, not only are you good enough, but it's a beautiful idea that each and every person can acknowledge the same within themselves. So no matter what I do to give myself a moment of peace, give myself a, a moment of reflection, more importantly, take time to feel good. When I do these things, I realize that when I'm out into the world interacting with the outside reality, they reflect that feeling. When I'm what I like to call in chill mode or when I'm simply uh, paying attention to the world around me, not displaying too many uh extroverted traits were simply taking it in the world around me reflects that as well as if they're simply engaged in their world their inner world so when i had this conversation yesterday there were so many reminders of how powerful we are in enriching our inner world 
and how beautiful the experience is when we see that magnified, projected, and witness in our external world. Now, it doesn't matter what your life looks like. That's a secondary world. The outside world is very secondary. But it's that richness of your inner world that I truly believe brings the beautiful connections that we experience in life. It brings about those random instances, certain situations or relationships that end up being a huge catalyst in your life because they are examples of what you believe inside. And when you nourish the desires that you want or the desires that you truly have within, when you nourish the seeds of those desires and it materializes and manifests into your external environment, there's nothing more beautiful than the feeling. So much so that when you're experiencing that feeling, that interaction, you're fully present. Nothing else matters. It's bliss. I share this as a reminder for whoever listens that it's not about making every single moment bad. But it's focusing on the ideas, beliefs, concepts within you and nourishing those seeds that have been planted as much as you can. And when those synchronistic moments come about, you're at the right place at the right time uh, and the right attitude, the right person, the right thing comes along. I believe that's what the experience and the journey is about. And even in those moments where we see the fruits of the seeds that we're not so proud of or that we're not so happy about, those are a blessing as well because it allows us to give ourselves grace. But more importantly, it allows us to see what we do not want. And when we know what we do not want, we're guided more to what we do want. And going along with this idea, I see how in any relationship that I've had in my life, as great as it was, it was because of me. As negative as I perceived it to be, it was because of me. And that's not letting people off the hook for uh, things that I have perceived, but it's a simple act of accountability and knowing, you know what? I chose to see them this way. You know, when they consistently didn't reflect what I chose them to be, and they were the problem. Then I took a step back and I said, you know what? It started with my choice. The whole discord, the whole disconnect started with my choice to put a person, a thing in a box and tell them who they are. Doesn't matter. Being able to have a moment of acceptance and knowing that we all are where we are because of who we are. Sometimes it's all the information that we need. And then receiving that information first, it allows us to check expectations, but also exercise a different level of discernment. It allows us to keep our power instead of giving it away to anybody or anything. It allows us to exercise our true freedom in who we are by giving that same freedom to someone else to be who they are. I think we'll leave it there for now. Until next time, be blessed. And please, don't forget to smile.